beautiful small drizzling rain and i was enjoying always looking out through the window always want to walk in between the field to just enjoy whether the trees and plants are in proper line in proper order and the small chigru which comes out of the trees is the sprouts looks so beautiful and i was working in the field in a little bit of rain and etc and then somebody came and called me we are going to have a small function and you must attend i asked what was the function it's a guru purnima so we wanted to have a small get together i said no i'm i can't come now first half i'm busy with my field such beauty is a field and i allowed to see the workers working and someday i want to be with them it is a great enjoyment it's a post lunch i come so post lunch then they call me i was shocked what they did it before taking me inside they put an ardi according to hindu tradition and the ardi is a light so that when the guru enters his darkness should go off and then they put a tilak a red tilak to mention that you are dangerous the red symbolizes the removal of the viral fever from you and the, the lamp which which they uh, do the aarti i was thinking all these years they said the guru continuously teaches and once a year let the students get a chance to even remove the darkness from the guru as he started teaching and teaching and teaching he finds majority of his students are not following the path and he enters into a state of i do not know shock that can be the darkness and he should not lose his interest so the students decides to show the light that we are still on the path of light we are removing your darkness so that can be accepted yes not that uh, you are doing an aarti and the guru thinks he is like a god or dog or nothing like that it is just a hindu feeling that removing the darkness see so give and take policy guru removes the students darkness and gives them light and student also once a year reminds him that we also get a chance to remove your darkness don't think we are on the wrong path we are still need you to straighten it up then when i went and said they put a big bowl and asked me to put my leg into that water and they not water and then they scrubbed my feet and again they did the cleaning my feet is like cleaning the foundation reminding the guru you have to continue to clean our foundation to make us stick to the foundation that was such a belief but nowadays people will laugh at this tradition because before i was not allowing them to do this i said oh, oh no 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 this is all stupidity the the master or the guru is trying to make the students uh, Uh, may feel that he is god no 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 there is no god and dog in this one it is just just scrubbing the leg because the master was through all the time scrubbing the children's mind and the body non stop without a break and suddenly students getting a chance to scrub yes they clean the leg beautifully and the same water they just sprinkle into the into the, into the body and again one more lamp of ardi to show that that the darkness move out and today was the day where the festival of guru purnima is dedicated to vyasa purnima veda vyasa krishna dwaipayana better known as veda vyasa born by the end of treta yuga and observed the whole of dwapar yuga considers one of the seven chiranjeevi long lived or immortal who are still in existence according to hindu belief He is tradition regarded as the author of the Mahabharata, means uh, big Bharata, the great Bharata. Bharata means India. Veda Vyasa said, "No one belongs to me. I belong to no one. There is no I or mine. All is blissful 
alone, alone less. Veda Vyasa said, no one belongs to me. Yes, what a truth if you become a little conscious. Then you will be thinking, then why the husband says the wife belongs to him, the wife belongs to him. Believes the husband belongs to me, the father, mother belongs to them, parents say the children belongs to them. No one belongs. They are all in the unconscious layer. The moment they become conscious, then you can see the family as becomes a joint family. Till then it is a family. It is not a joint family to go to the family tree. Where the Vyasa said, no one belongs to me. How could I say? That the wind belongs to me. How could we believe that the sunlight, the light which is falling onto us belongs to me? How could we believe that the rainwater which is falling belongs to me? And if it belongs to you, you should be able to hold it. You cannot hold it. Yes. If you hold it, they say it runs away. If you keep it open, it stays, goes the same. Veda Vyasa said, no one belongs to me. Yes, such beautiful, yes. Why should you think that somebody belongs to you? When God has gone so much, still why the greed that somebody else also belongs to you? When you, when you utilize yours itself, it's a thousand men warrior power. Millions of cells. It is priceless gift. Your eyes. Can you sell it? Your ears for a lack. Your mouth. Your hands and legs. Your heart for a lack of rupees. Or for a hundred thousand US dollar. No, you will not give it. It is priceless. When God has given, you should know to maintain. When you maintain, your body becomes so powerful. The whole world uses it. You become the wind like how the people uses the wind. They don't possess the wind. You just utilize the light sunlight but you don't possess the sunlight. You utilize the rain water but you don't possess. Likewise when your body becomes so powerful then you become like the rain and the wind and Sunlight that people start using. When the people start using only, then you first time you feel it is a joint family. Where the Vyasa said, I belong to no one. No one belongs. I, I don't belong. Nobody can possess me and say, I don't belong to this religion or this caste. Somebody today came and asked me, and I told them, how could I differentiate when an underworld dawn comes to my school? He came on the 2nd of May and on the 4th May, another Jagat Guru Swami and so and so came to me. And both were a huge big festival. The roads were blocked, police were there, security guards were there. And they said, what kind of man it is? How could you allow this man with so much? I said, if I have to decide whether what is his background and what is the Swamiji's Jagat Guru's background, then I have already decided this and that. I cannot belong to no one. I belong to no one, said Veta Vyasa. So I said, it is the policeman's duty. If I decide he is an Antifold Don and he is a Jagat Guru, then I will look at my children and look at them, look at the people and say, they are Sri Mandur, Ivaru, Badur. Sri Mandur means they are rich and these are poor. I cannot look at them because everybody comes in the form of God. And if that is the case, then I have to look at my children and look at whether they are upper caste or lower caste, white to the black, the rich or the poor. Hence, Veda Vyasa said, I belong to no one. Please understand. People come and ask me, well, where, where do you come from? I said, first of all, that question is wrong asking a senior, a man who left the, everything from the world and being here, 
That is not our Hindu tradition of asking that question. Nevertheless, because you asked that question, I'll answer. I said, one more time, what did you ask me? He said, Swamiji, can I ask you from, from the way you speak? I want to know where are you from? I said, do you know from where you came from? He said, I am from Mandir. I said, exactly from that place. Exactly from the place from where you came. No, I was thinking of the way you talk, your your pronunciation. I want to know. I know, I know, I know. You're asking me whether my mother tongue. No, it's inside my mother's mouth. He said, you know, so much. Don't kill me anymore. I already did half. Whether we are said, I belong to no one. Please understand, don't belong to no one. Nobody tried to possess. Neither Padma should cry or Kanika should cry or those people should cry. Don't cry for me. No need to cry or possess. Leave the possessiveness. There is no I or mine. The moment I, I becomes, then it becomes a family which is trying to hold on, not to share. Mine! Whose is this? Teacher asked. And one child got up. When I was studying in the convent, in the primary school, one child got up and said, It's mine! And teacher said, Is it Mankin is mine? <laughs> All is blissful. Alone. Less. You are never alone with so many of your body, millions of us. Veda Vyasa said, Nobody. No one belongs to me. I belong to no one. There is no I or mine. All is blissful aloneness. My prayers are always with you. Everybody asking for my blessings. What blessings can be? Your presence itself is God. And what can I share? You are all have shared enough. 